Happy Saturday to everyone. Hoping everybody's having a great Easter. <clears throat> um, just want to bring a quick update and to share a part of Easter with you. Um, that lady that I told you I did the interview with, she, I think that she was trying to black, she was trying to blacklist me. And I've done some research on the fact that, you know what, not that I'm a vindictive person, but I could sue her for every false claim that she makes when someone calls for a reference for me for another job. Been on seven interviews and wondered why I was not moving forward. And every time I would talk to you all and let you know that I had an interview, I was excited and the interview would go great and then all of a sudden I wouldn't hear anything. It's like it went cold. Um, but then come, come to find out, I know that it was her that was blacklisting me. So when they called her back for a reference, um, I know she was giving me a bad name. I told you last week she called me and she was talking about a position back with her company. And with that position she was saying something about my resume and how in my resume she was saying that I had embellished a lot of what I did with her and she wanted me to go back and edit that resume and resubmit it to her because so she can talk to me about the position back with her company. And you know what, I, I, it wasn't that I embellished what I did with her, it was just that I used medical technical terms that I don't think that she understood what they were. Um, and so I think that when she read that, she was like, oh my God, you know, he didn't do this or whatever. But I, I found out that they cannot, that people cannot um, blacklist you as far as employment. Now, the most that they're legally, lawfully, they're able to say about you is whether or not they would hire you back. Which I guess when, if they say, no, I wouldn't hire him back, I guess that would give the uh, potential employer some kind of leeway to go on there. Uh, this is a lady who told me when she, when I worked for her, that she hired someone who um, told them on the interview that she had a car, that he had a car, and that he was going to be the operations manager, uh, helping her with all her offices, going from office to office, and checking up on the status of each office and whatnot. And she hired him, and at the interview, he said he had a, he had a car, and when he once he got hired, she kept wondering why he was spent so much time in a certain office, and she asked him about it. And he told her that, uh, well, he didn't have a car. He was waiting for his first paycheck or two, then he was going to get a car. And so she said she decided she was going to work with him a little bit. You know, just maybe, you know, he'd get a car. And uh, so her and her husband loaned him a car uh, to until he, until he got one. Well, this guy ended up wrecking the car, leaving the scene of a crime, and of course it went it came back on them and when it came back on them she did a they did a background check on him and the guy that applied that he put on the application that the person he said he was was not who he was um he was a total different person um so then i mean what do you expect from somebody who really doesn't do a thorough background check on people to find out before they hire them um but anyway so i wish her luck no matter what she does no matter what she say no matter what she do she cannot hold me down she can't hold me hold me back i've decided what i'm going to do is i'm going to take um i only work for her for three months so it's not like i really need her on my references or anything um so she didn't really even get a chance to really know me like that and that's fine um so i just take her off my references and that way they won't go be able to go back on her and get a reference from her i still wish her and her company a lot of luck i mean I hope I hope her to be successful. Now, it's, as far as <clears throat> my endeavor, my next endeavor, I'm working on that project I told you about, about sorting my own substance abuse groups so I can stay connected to the field so I can help other people. Um, the name of it, I've decided is gonna be Keys to Recovery. Um, and I started working on the website and once I get it going and I get it up and, and, and all that, then if you'd like to be able to follow that, um, and be able to link to it and be able to share experiences um, of people that you know have substance abuse issues or be able to offer some encouragement and whatnot, then that'll be great. Um, but the name of it is going to be Keys to Recovery, and I'm working on um, making that an ancillary service to Messiah's Dream. Messiah's Dream, I don't know if I, I shared that with you all or not, but that Messiah's Dream is was started off as a um, nonprofit uh, for people with uh, people who are homeless and believing that everyone deserves a second chance in life, I started a company back in 2007 called Messiah's Dream. Uh, and the whole point of it was to get people to give people a second chance. They say that most Americans is one paycheck away from being homeless. Um, 
and I see a lot of services where they're doing they're implementing for veteran homeless veterans and whatnot and me thinking outside of that so everybody's doing that but what about the people who's not veterans who still needs that second chance who needs to be able to um, get it back together a lot of circumstances happen in life where we in we find ourselves in a situation where it could lead us to homelessness Honestly, I have to say that because I felt this thing of homelessness, not that I was like sleeping on the streets or anything, but I did not have a place to call my own, so I was sleeping between friends and whatnot. Um, my mom always told me, she always said that you're that one child of mine that that it seemed like you'll fall in this rut, but then before you know it, you bounce back and you're back fully again. Um, so um, um, my desire is to help as many people in this world as possible. I want to be able to affect lives. I mean, I think that's what we was born for. That's what we was put on this earth for. Um, this whole video I know started with me and my Perry Romberg syndrome, and I do still go through issues with that. I've decided to not focus so much on that, but to channel my energy somewhere else. And I was thinking on the way over here to come do this video, I was thinking, said to myself, I, you know, all the people has put into, and the money is still there for the surgery still $784. Um, I have been waiting to get money to put to that so I can actually add to it so I can be able to get the surgery. Uh, I've been looking into stem, uh, the stem cell research that they're doing now with uh, Paralomberg syndrome. Um, but I've decided that I'm going to let that set there and let it be there until I can actually do something with it. Uh, but I was thinking on the way over here, I said, well, you know, all these people that, that started with me with this pair of syndrome who donated to my cause, who, who was helping me to try to get forward with my surgery, um, I'd like to be able to do something to earn enough money to be able to pay them back because the money's been sitting there for almost a year now. And I haven't been able to go have a surgery done yet. Um, this, the surgery is very expensive and... Um, I wasn't expecting for the world to reach out and, and just, you know, and for it to happen overnight and for it to, to go. I'm, I'm glad that I was able to meet a lot of good people through my experience to, with the first video and a lot of those people are still following me and they're still with me. I love each and every one of you and God knows I mean that from the bottom of my heart. But I just wanted to kind of send, a, send out a quick video to you to let everybody know that um, with my, with every all my challenges in life, I've decided to take all those challenges, Perry syndrome, uh, people bashing my name, people trying to put me down, and all that stuff. Take all that, bundle it up, and and, and try to uh, impact someone's life in a better way, um, because I think that's the way that I'm going to get better is to reach out and help other people, um, and to be there for someone else. Because I mean, my my goal in life has always been that I want to be able to say that. I want, when I die, I want one person to be able to walk up to my grave, to my tombstone, and say because I was there at a part in their life that they really needed someone, that they are still here. And it's because of that moment that I crossed their lives. Um, same reason why I think that a lot of you are so empowering for me because you came into my life at a time when it seemed desolate and dark and you're still there as like beacons of light for me and I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Um, but again, so just to recap again, the name of the site is, the name of the organization that I'm starting as an ancillary service to my Shia's Dream is going to be uh, Keys to Recovery. Um, and I'm hoping to start that here in a local business, in a local, uh, I don't know, like a, so maybe someone can let me use their room for about an hour or two, a couple times a week to be able to provide um, on-site groups for people, to be able to uh, start doing that, and also to start like a forum online, a forum online where people can come together online from different parts of the world and be able to express their their um, desire to become substance abuse free or be able to find that support that they're looking for. Uh, I think a lot of people in this world are just looking for one person to believe in them, and I believe that it doesn't take a world to believe, maybe two or three people that stands behind them, just like y'all do for me. Um, and you keep me strong. Because, I mean, love is not in numbers. It's, it's, in, it's in quality and what people actually do. Um, and you've all shown me a lot of love and, and support. Um, but I want to say thank you to every each and every one of you. Um, and I'm going to get back now and I'm going to finish working on the website for Keys to Recovery working on the whole business aspect of that. Um, 
and so I can go ahead and start this ancillary service. Hopefully my start date for the on-site groups is going to be May the 15th. That's what I'm pushing for. I'm pushing to uh, be able to go into a, uh, uh, a group setting with people who's actually looking for services. Um, and just to let you know that the services, the, the substance abuse groups is going to be free groups for people who cannot afford to to uh, actually find support groups. Um, I think a lot of people out there with, with the substance abuse being one of the national crises right now, it's a big national crisis and there are a lot of people trying to address the issues, but a lot of people are trying to charge for their services and I think that there's support groups that I think that, that you don't need to charge for everything. I think some people was looking for it but they can't find it or they can't afford it. So then hopefully I'll be able to provide some kind of structure, some kind of uh, a setting for them to be able to come share their uh, stories and be able to learn some basic skills to kind of stay free. Um, but anyway, so I want to say thank you to all of you and I want to say I love you all and I want to say thank you for supporting me and hopefully I'll be looking forward to being able to get y'all that, that the web address to Keys to Recovery so that maybe you can go check it out. Um, and until I do another video, I will talk to you all later. Love you all. Bye-bye. See you. Have a good Saturday.